Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time joining, thank you. If you're a previous subscriber or a new subscriber, welcome back. In today's video, I am going to show you how to layer a quilt on a small table. I have problems getting down on the floor to lay out a quilt and to layer it. So I've been using a dining room table to do it. I had a eight foot long table before and we have upgraded to a pub style table that um, has like bar stool kind of benches to it. Um, and it's, it's definitely smaller than what I used to have. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start laying out part of the quilt. I'm going to pause the video and I will come back and show you what I have done. Okay, so I forgot to mention what I used to hold the layers of fabric to my table so they don't shift around a lot. Some people will use exercise weights. Um, you can get them like in one pound, two pound, three pounds, um, small handheld weights from Walmart or um, uh, oh, kind of like a health store, uh, sporting goods store, <laughs> sorry, I forgot the name. Um, and those work really good, but I have found these types of clips and I found a multi-pack at Walmart and in the multi-packs you'll get two large clips like this and you get several medium ones and there you can see Luna the crafty kitty jumping up onto the piano in the background um, what are you doing back there okay anyway um, I like using these clips because they they keep my fabric from falling off so I'm gonna go ahead and attach my backing fabric and then I will be right back. Okay, so I have my fabric attached to my tabletop. I have a clip on the top corner and the top corner here and then one kind of about a foot in on each side from the edge. And it may be a little hard to see, but on about right here is my center of my fabric and I lined the edge of my fabric up to the table. And the reason why I did that is because when I layer my quilt on the table, I try to do it in quadrants and it's just a little bit easier to fold that fabric back to do it that way. So what I do now is I will layer the batting and I'm going to match the center of the batting with my center line. So I will do that next and I will be right back. Okay, so I now have my batting on top and I have attached it to the very edge of the table as well. Um, I matched my batting size to the backing so I could just lay it evenly and I did make my backing and my batting two to three inches larger all the way around the size of the quilt top. So now what I with the top section edge lined up with the table and I have the right side lined up with this side of the this side of the table here. I have put two more clips so it stays nice. I have my wrinkles smoothed out of it. So now my next step is I'm gonna start to lay the quilt top. And what I wanna do when I, when I lay my quilt top is I wanna line up the top edge, whatever distance down you know that you made your backing larger. So my quilt is 60 by or 61 by 61 inches. So I'm going to put my top edge of my quilt 
I made my batting and my backing three inches larger all the way around. So I'm going to put my quilt top three inches down from the top. That lets me know how I'm keeping everything straight. Another little tip I forgot to mention is if you noticed when I first started, I had a plastic tablecloth on my table and it is one of the tablecloths that kind of have that felt backing to it. And you can flip that over and that will give your fabric a little more something to grip to so it doesn't move around as much. So there is that little tip that you can do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay out the quilt top and I will be right back. Okay, so I have my quilt top on the top now. Now what I wanna do is I wanna kinda play with it and make sure that I have my centers lined up. If you are doing a quilt that has a solid backing to it, solid backing fabric, you don't really need to worry about getting everything lined up correctly, just as long as you know that you have extra all around it. That will let you trim it up later to square it up. So, like I mean, um, since I made my backing much larger than my quilt top, it's gonna give me a lot of room on the edges that my quilt won't run over off the edges. So, like on this side over here, I have a lot of extra batting, and here's my quilt edge, I don't know if I'm Hopefully I'm not in this shot, but um, my quilt edge is here and my fabric edge is here. So that's going to give me a lot of extra fabric. I'm not sure if you guys could see that, but um, you can kind of see that on this side, I don't have it quite lined up. So here's the edge here and here's the edge up here. So you can see I've got like five inches up here and four inches or three inches down here. That's okay because my backing fabric is one solid piece of fabric. There's no seams in it. So when I'm quilting that, there's not gonna be any crooked lines on the back from seams. That's why a solid backing fabric with no seams is great because it just saves you that extra step of having to line everything up. Okay, I'm out of breath. <laughs> so if you do wanna line up your seams um, and you do a pieced background, it will take you a little bit more time to get things lined up. Okay, so our next step is we are going to start the quilt basting. I'm going to be using a quilt basting spray. So I'm going to pause the camera and move up a little bit more so you can see the next steps. Okay, so before I go any further, um, I want to clarify a couple things. Now, this is the technique that works for me. This technique may not work for everybody. Um, try it first on a quilt that you're not going to um, worry a lot about or a project that you're not gonna worry a lot about um, and see if you like the technique. Um, like I said, this works for me and I have found over the years that one solid piece of fabric works better for me for the backing because I have had issues lining up my seams when I do a pieced backing. So yes, it is a little, um, uh, not really, I was, I was gonna say lazy, but it's not really a lazy way, but it's just an easier way to do a quilt backing with just a solid fabric or um, a one complete piece of fabric. Okay, 
So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start doing the basting. And I use June Taylor Quilt Basting Spray. This works for me. Um, I was one of those believers that um, Quilt Basting Spray was, I, I just did not like it when I first started. Now that I use it more, I really like it a lot. Okay, so I have, as I've been layering my layers, I have been smoothing them out as I go along. But now what I wanna do is I'm gonna start up here in the top right corner and I'm going to fold down and I'm gonna make sure everything's straight as I fold down as well. And make sure I don't have a lot of wrinkles. So now what I'm also going to do is I am going to fold down the batting at the top. And I'm gonna leave this clip here. So I'm gonna start folding that down. I'm gonna go ahead and pause, and once I get this folded down, I'll be right back. Okay, so I have the quilt top folded back and the batting. Now I wanna make sure that I have everything smoothed out still on the backing. Um, make sure there's no lint on it, because that may show up. And let's see if we're okay, okay. So now what I want to do, since I already know that my batting is matching up with the top section of my quilt and the top and the right edge of my quilt, I want to maintain from this corner smoothing things that way because I know that these sides matched up. That's just what works good for me. So I'm going to start from that side and I'm just gonna give it a light spray. And that's all you need. So now I'm going to flip this back up, make sure everything is smooth. And you can see I have a little wrinkle right here and I can get that out easily. So I'm now I'm going to put the clip back and the clip back on here because I'm going to be moving it around. So I want it to stay. Okay. Also, when you are moving your batting around, you don't want to, to stretch it because that is going to distort your batting. Okay, so I'm going to pause and continue going across the quilt, and I will be right back. Okay, so I have my whole top section here sprayed and smoothed out. So now my next step is I'm going to fold the top section and spray baste it. So I'm going to, again, just spray. I know that I have plenty of the top, so I'm going to make sure I smooth it out well, make sure I don't have any puckers. So I have this corner, I'm going to work my way across the quilt, and then I will show you our next step. Okay, and again I have my top all attached. You can see I just need a little more in this corner here and I just smooth that out and it is attached. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from this section and I'm going the bottom section and I'm going to start folding the quilt up to where I have it sprayed at the top. 
That is so I can spray the batting to the backing and I'm gonna roll those up and then I'll show you our next step. Okay, so I have the quilt rolled up. Now my next step is to do the same thing with the batting. Move my clips up here. And I'm going to fold in sections And I hope I'm not getting myself too much in the shot here. It's not about me, it's about the project. Okay. I am a little bit out of breath walking back and forth. It is easier to have somebody else do this with you. Um, my husband does usually help me with this process. It goes a lot faster. But if you don't, it's, that's okay too. Okay, so I'm just going to, you can see here, it is starting to pull a little bit and that is where I have the spray basting. I'm going to make sure I line this edge back up over here and clip and make sure my Wrinkles are smoothed out as well as possible. Okay, so also you want to be really careful when you're doing your base, your spray basting. Um, they do say spray basting, you can take it apart, but depending on the batting you're using, sometimes when you pull the batting back off, it will tear so you do need to be really careful with that so now what you're just going to do is you're going to continue doing your your spray basting in small sections you can leave it hanging off the edge of the table if that works for you to do that next portion so the drape sometimes the gravity helps pull wrinkles out so that's another tip that you can use. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue spray basting. And we're gonna start, I'm gonna just do a little bit of a smaller section. Maybe not as wide as what I did the first time. So I'm going to make sure that I'm smoothing as I go along. and you need to be really careful. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pause, and when I get this next section, I will show you how you can move your quilt. Okay, so I moved back out a little. I have the backing spray basted to the batting. I have the quilt top, spray basted to the top of the batting to the edge I have from that side from here down to the edge of the table and all that portion is complete so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the clips and I'm going to slide the quilt top further to the other side of the table so I can do this portion that is hanging down I will move that and I will be right back Okay, now this time I have the portion that we already have spray basted moved to the chairs that I have in the back edge of the table back there. That portion is resting on those chairs. Since it, it's a little bit heavier, um, it's, it's resting on those chairs so the weight of the quilt does not pull itself off the table. I again have the backing lined up with the edge of the table. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull back to where I know I have it spray basted. And that side looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and go to this side. And if I'm in the video, please forgive my sloppy appearance appearance today 
I am going on three hours of sleep. I have a huge delivery coming today that I have been anticipating for the last 40 days to get here. So I had to be up early today. Okay, so now I'm going to start spray basting the rest of the quilt. And when I finish this portion, what's well, on the tabletop, I will rotate the quilt around and we'll do the, the, the last little pit, bit of the quilt that is hanging off. I will be right back. Okay, so I have all that portion of the quilt spray basted, the backing to the batting or the batting to the backing, then the top to the batting. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start to rotate my quilt. And my whole tablecloth is coming with it. Just give me a minute, let me turn the camera off and fix that. Okay, so I have my quilt flipped around. Uh, I had a little gremlin under the table that was grabbing at the quilt and the tablecloth underneath of it. She thought it was playtime. So I had a little bit of difficulty there. Um, okay, so this is the portion that we have left to do the spray basting. This is the portion that was hanging over the end of the table. And we just have to spray baste that last little section. And then we have our quilt top spray basted. I will flip back and walk around and get the other side. And you can see a little bit where some of the spray basting kind of oversprayed, so it's a little tacky in those spots. We want to make sure that we're still smoothing our wrinkles out. So we want to make sure that there's no wrinkles there. And we're just going to do the last little portion. And then we're going to flip it over and make sure the backing does not have a lot of wrinkles in it. And hopefully, if we did it well enough, there won't be any wrinkles in the back. And I like to make sure that I get the very edge. And for those of you that don't know, I will be quilting this on a embroidery um, a machine. <laughs> machine embroidery design is how I will be quilting it. And that we have, let me do this last little portion here. That's good. Okay, so we are looking good. My next step is I am going to flip the quilt over and bear with me on this one. Hopefully the tablecloth will not move again. So I'm gonna just kind of wiggle it. And Okay, so there is a wrinkle there. It doesn't look too bad. Um, hmm. I don't know. The, yeah, I have some wrinkles here and there. You can see I have some wrinkles there. Um, that is where doing it with two people uh, is more beneficial but I will be able to work out the wrinkles by just peeling the top back just a little bit and adjusting the fabric. 
And hopefully, as I go along, I will be able to get all the wrinkles out on my own. Um, definitely, it is a bit of work doing it by yourself. Um, I am going to be investing in some pool noodles so I can roll the fabric up on the pool noodles and it'll be a little bit easier for me to do it by myself that way. Um, when that happens, probably next year, when pool noodles come back in stock, I will show you that. So um, right now, I'm going to work on fixing the wrinkles on the back and that is it. Um, the next video is going to be starting the quilting and hope you all stay tuned for that and we will see you all then. Thanks, bye bye. Okay, so I had ended the video and then I decided to go ahead and pop back on and show you that I got all the wrinkles out of the back. It is really nice on the front and the wrinkles are out of the back now where you could see that it looked really wavy like water. So I've got all those figured out. Um, so now I'm going to fill or uh, fold it up. I'm out of breath again. I'm gonna fold it up and our next video will be starting the machine embroidery quilting. And the design that I have for that is going to be a surprise. So please stay tuned for that video. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I know it was kind of a choppy video. Um, I didn't want to get myself a lot in this video. So um, I'm going to try to figure out an easier way how to uh, film the basting of the quilts. Um, if you guys have any ideas, please comment down below. And stay tuned for the next video. And we'll see you all soon. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.